there are a lot of different ways that we can frame articles um, in order to make them uh, more original and maybe give an idea that's been done before a new spin. So we're going to start to take a look at um, how we kind of find the format of some articles so that it, it can take uh, more of an uh, original perspective and um, you know give a little bit of creativity for our readers. A roundup is a story that I, I bet you see all the time in the magazines that you read um, and what you'll notice about them is that there's a number related to them. So examples would be five island vacations for honeymooners, ten romantic getaways for parents, seven tips for a happy healthy baby. Um, these are all stories that would fall under this category of a roundup. Now what that means is there's a common criteria by which you're going to choose all of these, uh, all of the, the features of this article, all of the, the segments of it. So this idea of seven secrets to a happy baby, each segment will deal with one of those secrets that will help you have a happier baby or um, you know, picking ten vacation spots. Each one of them will be like a mini profile to itself of those vacation spots, but it'll come under an overarching theme. So the example I gave you was, you know, get away for parents, or it can be, um, you know, uh, traveling within, if you want to pitch a story to Ohio Magazine, then maybe you look at um, the best, uh, you know, out of the way locations um, within two hours of Ohio, or something like that, and you could find five of them that fit a certain criteria. You could narrow it even further for, um, you know, honeymooners, or for uh, parents looking to get away, or for people traveling with kids. Uh, eat, they don't have to be in any particular order. So if you do do the um, idea of the, the best seven places to vacation with your kids that's um, no more than three hours from Ohio, then it doesn't matter whether you go to Pennsylvania first or you go to West Virginia first or you go to Indiana first. You could start anywhere and just kind of go around the horn. So that's one of the bigger differences uh, with this is the fact that there's no chronology because it is similar to another type of story and that would be the how-to. So often how-to's identify themselves uh, pretty obviously. They'll say it's how to make money blogging for writers, how to uh, you know, be a freelance writer and earn 100000 a year, how to fix writer's block, etc. These stories are telling the reader how to do something and it has to go in some chronological order. You need to do one element before you do the other. So this is going to be a description of how something can be accomplished. There's always going to be information, but advice incorporated. It's sequential. A lot of times people like odd numbers, so in our roundups and our um, these how-tos, we're looking at an odd number because that just seems to be the way our minds work. Um, you know, I had a student who, who, a good example of this, who'd wanted to do a story on how you could pack to travel overseas without having to check any luggage. So, you know, of course you have to think about how long you're going to be gone for, you have to think about the clothes that you want to bring with, you have to think about you know, how many pairs of shoes, etc. But from a sequential standpoint, the first thing that you have to do is buy a bag that will fit in the overhead compartment. So that's logically step one and then you take it forward from there, step two, step three. So that idea of, of being sequential is key to these. You also uh, kind of promise the reader that they're going to have some success. If they're going to follow your instructions, they should reach a resolution that makes them feel they've accomplished something. Um, it, try to make it fairly easy to follow. We don't want something that's going to be overly convoluted for them. Make sure that you're honest with them, though, to let them know what are some of the challenges they may face. So on that story about uh, packing to go overseas with one suitcase, um, you know, my husband wears size 11 shoes. He's going to be able to pack a lot less of them if he followed these the criteria than I would, um, who wears a size six. So, you know, being able to mention those sort of things, those kind of limitations, even being help people with some supplies, um, give examples, anecdotes from other people of where success and failure have come in, um, and, and just make sure that they kind of know how to accomplish what it is that you're setting out for them. Now, another type of story that I'm sure that you've read in, in magazines that you've been looking at um, is what's called a personal experience story. And what this does, it, it's similar in a way to the first person lead that we've talked about under leads, but it's a, a different in the sense that it's a way of showing a unique personal experience in a way other people can learn from and you bring in other sources to kind of support your own position. Um, the key is that these are not about the author as much as they're about the reader, helping the reader understand a particular experience 
through your own experience. This differs from uh, the first person lead, as we mentioned, where you're just using your own story to get us into the article and then you leave. Uh, it's also different than a personal essay, which is your story that carries all the way through. And you know, if you're a reader of women's magazines, you read a lot of personal essays about you know someone who um, was attacked and how they overcame that, or uh, someone who you know was homeless or did all these things. But they don't bring in other sources. So this idea of this personal experience story is going to use your experience to sort of guide us from beginning to end, but we're going to bring in other sources and other experiences to support what it is that you're sharing with us. Now the goal for this story is something that uh, the reader can relate to. Um, it may be something that they want to uh, share or in, you know, enjoy. It's something they can benefit from. It may be something they want to avoid, but you're going to give them your experience mixed with other factual uh, components and, and other anecdotes that will help them navigate through this um, if, in the sense that uh, if it did come up for them in their own lives, they might have some idea how to cope with it. So when I've written these stories, I've, I've basically used the, the factual information, the experience as a scaffolding that kind of frames the entire story. And then I let my own anecdotes and other people's anecdotes and other factual information um, kind of build up around this uh, in order to illustrate the factual information. Um, it's very anecdotal, uh, very anecdotal throughout, but certainly in the lead and the conclusion. Um, one of the goals of it is it should be over so that you have some perspective that you can provide to the reader that, that's complete. Um, the example that I'm showing you here is my dog, and uh, this is my dog, Cody. And uh, Cody was a uh, black lab who um, suffered from cancer and he died. Um, and I've, as I mentioned to you in a prior, uh, when we were talking about conclusions, I didn't know what to do about Cody's death and uh, he was at the vet hospital. So I ended up pursuing this story about you know my own personal experience with dealing with Cody's death and how I um, decided what to do with his remains, etc. But um, I also brought in other people whose pets had passed away. I brought in um, funeral homes and cemeteries and grief support counselors and people who could talk about what this experience is like about losing your pet and how uh, it might be best for everyone to cope with it um, going through my experience as the framework. These are some of my favorite stories to write, the true life drama. This is uh, some sort of dramatic experience that a real person has had. Um, a lot of times they relate to medical conditions or something to do with weather. So I've written a story about a woman who um, was uh, in a, a terrible storm and there was flooding and she ended up uh, managing to drive herself to the fire station because she couldn't get to the hospital and had a baby in the fire station. I did another story with a gentleman who suffered not one but two aortic aneurysms and normally uh, the first one can be fatal. So the fact that he survived, too, was pretty amazing. So they're extraordinary circumstances. Um, but they can also be a common problem. So if you, uh, uh, the idea of cancer, you know, cancer is a relatively uh, common occurrence, unfortunately. But you can get someone whose story is extraordinary in some way who um, can really bring something to life and, and share that experience with other people. Um, the lead is crucial to introduce you to this main character of what their circumstances were to make you care about them and uh, make you want to invest in in the story that they have to tell. So where do you find these? Most often I find them uh, in the newspaper. I find them when other people are sharing stories of, oh my god, you won't believe what happened to this person. Um, you know, the picture I have here is, uh, of course, the plane that landed in the Hudson. And uh, each one of these people would have a story that could be told for their local newspaper, um, for the, their college newspaper of, of what their experience was like to be um, you know, landing on the Hudson and, and being saved in this way. Um, you know, the example I've given you in uh, the iTunes U course, uh, one is a, a gentleman who uh, was attacked by a shark. That's a story that hasn't been written yet, but it was a news story that I saw that certainly could turn into a true life drama. And then uh, I've given you the original article that ran uh, in Outside Magazine of Aaron Ralston, who I, I bet most of us know uh, as the gentleman who was hiking and got his arm stuck and was stuck for 127 hours and ultimately cut his own arm off in order to uh, free himself. That, of course, was made into a movie, but before that it was an article that was written by Aaron Ralston himself or outside magazines. So, you know, anything that you hear of that, that just seems almost unbelievable, it's just in incredible that someone could survive such a thing or such an experience just sounds so mesmerizing um, that other people would want to hear that story. That is where true life dramas begin.